Lawmakers are finally expected to provide much-needed economic relief to the American people. Congressional leadership has agreed on a $900 billion coronavirus stimulus package. The deal includes $600 direct payments to most Americans. It will also extend an unemployment insurance bonus of $300 per week through mid-March. The package gives billions of dollars in relief to small businesses, schools, transit systems, and renters. Some money will go directly for coronavirus testing, tracing, and vaccine distribution. Congress will also extend the eviction moratorium. This morning on the House floor, Speaker Nancy Pelosi called it a good bipartisan bill. However, she stressed Congress will have to act again in the new year. I would hope that as we see the need for what we have done in this nearly $900 billion legislation that we'll vote on today, that everyone understands it's a first step. It's a first step, as President-elect Biden has said. It's a first step. And we will need to do more. After announcing the deal last night, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said the bill will provide much-needed relief. As our citizens continue battling this coronavirus, this holiday season, they will not be fighting alone. There is unlikely to be pushback from the White House on the spending bills. All indications at the moment are President Trump will sign it once it hits his desk. For more on the relief bill, I want to bring in Heather Long. She's an economics correspondent for The Washington Post. Hi, Heather. Great to see you. Um, so lawmakers on both sides of the aisle say the bill is a good step. But it's worth looking at what has happened to America's families in the time since Congress passed the last bill. A recent University of Chicago and Notre Dame analysis shows that nearly 8 million Americans have fallen into poverty since the summer, with the poverty rate jumping to 11.7 percent last month. So for context, the federal poverty line is an income of $26,200 for a family of four. It's the largest single rise in 60 years. So, Heather, do economists you've spoken with believe these stimulus checks and unemployment benefits are enough to get needy Americans through the winter? It does feel like a Christmas miracle that we finally have this deal uh, about ready to be passed. It's obviously taken, as you point out, five months to get here, and millions of people have really suffered. Uh, in addition to people falling into poverty, 12 million Americans are behind on rent payments and are fearing eviction in the coming days. So this bill does re deliver the relief that's needed to get some of these people through January and February. It extends the eviction moratorium. It gives more unemployment aid. It gets those $600 checks out. The Treasury Secretary just said today that he hopes those checks could go out as soon as next week. So certainly by January, that's money in people's hands that is much needed. The big question is, is it enough? And the short answer is probably not. A lot of that aid only goes through the middle of March or early April, and the vaccines probably won't be available to most Americans until the summer. So there's a mismatch there. Are we really going to see enough people returning to restaurants, returning to hotels, returning to travel in the spring? I, I think we're still going to have a lot of people out of work, and they're going to fall through the cracks again on aid. And Heather, what about for those small businesses, the schools, the transit systems? I mean, we know that local and state governments were not included in this bill. So are economists or state leaders calling for another spending bill immediately in the new year? What do they say they need? Yeah, state and local leaders definitely say more aid is going to be needed. Uh, there was hope they could get uh, about $160 billion in this bill, but it ultimately they couldn't come to an agreement on that. As you point out, there is some money for schools and for transit, so public transit for some highway money. That's going to go a long way, but the big concern is uh, there's still a lot of layoffs. You even have cities like Los Angeles talking about laying off police right now because of these budget shortfalls. We saw the same thing after the Great Recession. At the moment, uh, we're down 1.3 million positions in state and local governments, a lot of those at schools. So I think that's why there's these calls for aid. Does it have to be in January? No, but certainly by the spring, I think those calls are going to get very loud. 
for more state and local aid. And Heather, we should note that this bill almost got held up because of changes to the Federal Reserve suggested by Republican Senator Pat Toomey of Pennsylvania. You follow the Fed closely. Why is it significant that his proposal did not go through? Well, we're still in a crisis. We're still in a pretty deep recession here with nearly 10 million Americans out of work. And what people were arguing is don't hamstring any possible relief measures. So those ones that Pat Toomey wanted to prevent from restarting were measures that could potentially give loans through the Federal Reserve uh, to various state and local governments, to small businesses. Now, there wasn't a huge take up. There wasn't a lot of activity on those, on those facilities in the fall. But again, I think a lot of people were saying, why take any possible lifelines and life vests off the table while we're still in an emergency situation? So there's a lot of relief that there's still the possibility that those could come back if needed. And Heather, when do economists expect the U.S. to get back to pre-COVID levels? Are we looking at, you know, an, another year from now, realistically? Yeah, that's a great question. And here's really the, the fundamental takeaway is in 2021, we expect the economy in terms of growth, so our GDP that we talk about every quarter, that's probably going to recover fully in 2021. But jobs, employment probably won't be back to those pre-COVID levels until 2024. And so that's why you're still going to see a lot of pain, even though the stock market will look good next year probably, and we'll probably have some really strong growth numbers Numbers, there's still going to be a lot of people who just can't get back to work right away or will have to retrain for an entirely new job. That's going to take time, and we want to make sure that those people don't fall further behind. Absolutely. Well, Heather Long of The Washington Post, thank you so much. Thank you.